there is a myth that grandmasters can see 10, 15, 20 moves ahead. And it's a great myth because I'm a grandmaster and it makes me look like a super freaking genius. <laughs> but the truth is, in just the first four moves, there are 318 billion ways you could play. Now, that'd be cool if I could pull that off, but grandmasters just can't. It's too much. So we use different techniques to be able to look ahead. And some of these techniques include chunking, which means taking a group of a chess position and seeing what possibilities can come from just that group, or pattern recognition, which is just going over a lot of positions that look very similarly and extrapolating truths from that. The stepping stone method, which is to take a position, freeze it in your mind, and go from there to guess the next position. But one of my favorites that I love to solve these kind of chess puzzles is called retrograde analysis. And what you do with retrograde analysis is that in order to look ahead, it pays to look backwards. Now, why is this so useful? Well, in chess, it's a very complicated case. You've got all these chess pieces, it's 32 pieces, but after five moves, the position starts to evolve a little bit, and then the game starts to go on, and you see the chess position get a little simpler and a little bit simpler and less pieces on the board, until finally, in this case, a game that I played in a tournament in Foxwoods, it gets to something like this. When great players play, it often gets to something like this. You don't see like some easy early checkmate, grandmaster see through all that stuff. What you see is some end game, something really, really simple. And we like to study things like this, grandmasters do, so that if we get to them, we know how to play them cold, but also so that we can steer the position that's in front of us, the more complex ones you saw earlier, to something this easy, something this simple. So in this way, when you're dead, I already knew like 10 moves ago because I knew where we were going. Now, why is this so effective? Well, it's something about the human mind, the problem with the human mind. We're very logical creatures. So I want you to play along with me a few games. Take a look at this sentence. Now, most of you read it a sentence the second time around and realize that you missed the word the the first time around. Your mind is very logical. It proceeds forward. It just ignores anything that breaks with this logical stream. And so you don't see the word the the first time, the second the the first time you read it. But if you read this sentence backwards, you would automatically catch it. You'd go backwards and then you get to brain, you get to the, then you say, whoa, there are two thes in the sentence. This is a really cool trick for proofreading papers. You know, you're writing a paper and then there's like these silly mistakes. Why are these mistakes in my paper? You read it backwards, you'll catch all of them. All right, let's go on to this problem, an interesting problem. Bacteria that double every 24 hours fill a lake it has infested after precisely 60 days. On what day was the lake half full? Now, a lot of people seeing this problem, they think 30, like, you know, you split it in half. Well, that's not the right answer. And also, people might want to calculate. It's too big, it's math, it's boring. I don't want to do that either. But if you do this problem backwards, you get the answer right away. What's the answer? 59, obviously, you start at the end, you go backwards, it's like, oh yeah, it's half full, the answer is 59. Here's another puzzle, a little bit more complicated. You have six numbers, one through six. The cards are face down. You and I are gonna pick a card. You pick a card and you look at it, it says the number two. I look at my card, I think about it for a minute, and I say, I wanna trade. The reason I wanna trade, we're gonna trade to see who has the highest number at the end. Do you trade with me? Most people say, of course, I got a two, two sucks. There are four numbers higher, probability says I'm gonna do better. Wrong answer, you're playing a grandmaster. <laughs> you start from the back and you work it out. If I had the number six, would I offer to trade? Of course not, I'm not dumb. What about the number five? Probably not either because you're not gonna say yes if you have a six. Well, if five's not gonna trade and six is not gonna trade, four is gonna be like, I'm not trading either because five and sixes don't trade. So you see what happens as we work backward. Three's gonna realize four, five, and six, they don't trade. So the offer is definitely a one and all of you who said yes, thanks for your money. <laughs> so this retrograde analysis is used in different places. It's used to prove intoxications hours after an alleged DUI by Pennsylvania police officers, which is kind of cool. Well, it means don't drink and drive. The use of retroanalysis is used in law, science, medicine, insurance, stock market, 
politics, career planning, but I find its use to be a more interesting place. Maybe one of the most interesting uses is in this movie, which I know a lot of you know, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, where Brad Pitt plays a guy who's living his life backwards. And what this movie makes me think of is that great quote that, well, that quote you often hear from people who are older, that youth is wasted on the young. Well, if you can see the end game, your youth will not be wasted on you. Thank you very much.